So we got a misfire in this Toyota Camry. So we looked through the error codes with the OBD2 scanner and Torque. And Torque is basically an app that can basically do anything with your car. It can give you real-time information gauges, like your vacuum, your mass airflow sensor, different information like that. And you can also scan for fault codes. So I scanned for the fault codes and we got a cylinder four misfire. So usually on most cars, the cylinder closest to like the serpentine belt is cylinder number one and then number two, number three, and number four. And since it said we have a cylinder four misfire, that means it's a problem actually in the cylinder rather than a multiple misfire, which could mean there's problems with fuel and it affects all the cylinders. So with a 10 millimeter wrench, we can take these bolts off here and then we can remove the cover. So these are little rubber connectors here that are holding it on. If you just pull up, then those break loose. You can see it was just that. It was kind of grabbing on and was holding the whole thing on. So it sure is clean under here. And not only actually clean, but it's just simple. This is really nice. Toyota knows how to do this nicely. And of course, these are also 10 millimeter bolts. Seems like everything on this engine is 10 millimeter. So in order to disconnect this wire, I just pull this tab here, and then I should be able to wiggle that off. And now the whole coil pack lifts out. I can feel it's, there we go. So we'll go ahead and pull the spark plug out and look at the condition of that because that could cause a misfire. So if we take out the spark plug, At first glance, this spark plug looks like it's pretty good. So now let's go ahead and test the coil pack. If we put this coil pack tester in, this kind of looks like a spark plug, but what it is, is it has a piece of plastic in there. Once you plug it in and crank the engine over, if it has enough power to arc through that piece of plastic and metal outside, then we know the spark or the coil pack is good. So if we go in the fuse box here, on the inside of the lid, it normally has labels, and we wanna disconnect the fuel pump. If you look right here, it says fuel open, and that's the fuse we wanna take out, and that's a five amp fuse. So if we put this sticker kinda of like that, and we wanna look for a five amp fuse, I can see one right there. That's our fuse, so I'm gonna just take a pair of pliers, grab onto that. So here we go, now I got that out. And this is our fuel pump fuse, so now we can crank the engine over without it spewing a bunch of unburnt fuel into the cylinders. So the car did start, and it looks like we need to pull the 20 amp EFI fuse after doing some research. So it's that fuse right there. So we'll go ahead and pull this one out. So we'll get a bigger pair of pliers to get a bit more leverage pulling this out. That worked, worked much better. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the EFI fuse and that will shut off all the fuel. It stands for electronic fuel injection. And it also shuts off the spark we made note of whenever we unplugged the fuse and we were testing the coil packs. There was no spark. So we know that it also turns off the electric in the coil packs. But we're gonna go ahead and do a compression test just to see what the compression is. It seems like the spark plug when we tested the coil packs, seems like they fired every time. So we'll do the compression test to narrow it down. So it's right there at 180, that looks good. So let's go ahead and check the other cylinders. All right, so it looks like we're right there at 170. Sometimes these coil packs can be a little tricky to pull out. So if we just use a screwdriver, sometimes that can just help us get in there and help pull them out. All right, let's go ahead and check cylinder number two. So this one's right there at about 
160, 165. So here's cylinder number one, spark plug. They all look pretty good. Let's go ahead and do a compression test on cylinder number one. So this compression was at about 165 and it's all about the same on the cylinders. There's a little bit of variance, but I guess that's okay. What we're gonna end up doing now is just put the spark plugs back in, the same ones in the same cylinders. And then we're gonna move cylinder number three's coil pack to cylinder number four and cylinder number four's to cylinder number three. And if the misfire then comes to cylinder number three, then we know that the problem is the coil we're pack. coming out a little rough, almost like there was a lot of corrosion. It didn't feel very smooth like they should, so we're just putting a little bit of anti-seize on here just to help them go in a little bit smoother and come out easier next time. So now I have these coil packs switched and labeled. This one's number four and this one's number three. So we'll know if the misfire moves, then we'll know what the problem is. On these bolts that hold the coil packs on, I'm just gonna put a little bit of anti-seize on them as well. It'll act as a little bit of a lubricant and it'll also be a lot easier next time. So now with everything back together, we can go ahead and put the fuse back in. I can hear some things actually turn on in the engine. It's pretty quiet, you probably can't hear it. But now we're gonna go ahead and take it for a test drive and see if we can get it to misfire. So the check engine light is on, but if we drive it a little bit, it should turn off. If it doesn't, we can just clear it with the app. So when we're idling, I can feel a rough idle. It actually stalled the car out. So we know we have a problem there. So at this low idle, I can definitely feel it sputtering. I can feel the car shake. So I rechecked the fault codes, refreshed the page, and we have a cylinder three misfire detected. Now that means that our coil pack that we changed to cylinder three, the misfire followed it. So that probably means the coil pack there's a problem with that. So we were getting a misfire here on cylinder four, and then we took the cylinder four coil pack and put it on cylinder number three, and then put the coil pack from number three on number four. And the misfire moved to cylinder number three here. So that means the coil pack is the smoking gun. So I was looking online and I called some of the local auto parts stores at AutoZone, it's $70 for one coil pack. It has a one year warranty. And then $80 for one coil pack, that has a lifetime warranty. So if it ever breaks, you could take it back in. But online, I found, this is the cheapest one I could find on eBay. For $10, it's one coil pack. I think I could buy eight of these coil packs instead of one coil pack from AutoZone. I mean, that's basically a lifetime warranty, but I bet you'd have to have the receipt and bring everything in if you wanted to get a new one from AutoZone. So we'll probably just get two of these coil packs and then replace the one, and then if another one goes bad, we could just throw so it So we in. just got the new coil pack, it just arrived in today, and it looks pretty nice. I'd say for $10, it looks just like the other ones that were on the car before. I just noticed a few differences it looks like a little bit of a different angle here, but I think it'll still fit on. So now let's go ahead and put the new coil pack in. So unfortunately, we got the wrong coil pack. This is the new one here. If we take a look at this, the lengths here are much different, and that is something that we couldn't tell in the picture. It did say that it was for a V6, but we didn't think that would be a big deal, but Definitely the two ones are different on the different engines. So this one is much longer. So we found some new ones on carparts.com. They're about, I think they were about $18 a piece. And that's including shipping. So for two of them, that's $32.37. That's still about half the price of what it was at the auto parts store. And we're getting two of them. So for $18, we have our brand new coil pack just came in, we'll take it out of the package. And this definitely looks really nice. It's clean. So let's go ahead and see if this fits. I'm gonna take the bolt out here, put it in place. And that definitely looks 
That that definitely fits. This is what we want it to be like. So now I can go ahead, snap that on, make sure that coil pack is pressed in there, and put in the new screw here. So we'll go ahead and tighten the coil pack, make sure it's in there nice and secure. Now we'll go ahead and put the plastic piece on here and put these two screws on. All right, so we're taking it for a drive and it sure seems to be driving nicely. And the problem is solved. It's no longer skipping or stalling.